Hey guys, welcome to Merge Live. Yes, and glad you guys could be here. And I know it's a little different. It's Dom and Carter this time around. And the student ministry staff made the horrible mistake of allowing us to be your hosts this evening. So we will guide you through this magical journey with our setup. Shout out to Chuck, who spent all day making these microphones. So I'm sure you guys will have chances. You will see some other people up here and they get to use these fancy microphones but yeah they're real nice um tonight we're gonna just start off with um hanging out me and carter and then soon we're gonna transition to some fun things and get some more people involved um zoe and nate have some fun stuff planned for us todd's gonna have a message we're gonna do a quick debrief after that hey great rundown of the evening dom excellent work thank you all right dom let's just Let's just talk to each other. Let's just hang out for a bit. I miss you. Tom, how have you been? How, walk me through your daily routine in quarantine. Tell me. Um, I wake up at around 7.30. That's stupid. That's so dumb. Just hear me out. I started doing my homework. I recently got employed by Strickland's Ice Cream and Creamery. This is not an ad. This in is Montrose. not an ad. No, it is sponsored by Strickland's. <laughs> it's not. It's not. Merch but, has been officially um, sponsored by Strickland's. Yeah, we have, we have sponsors now. So oh, yeah. That's something um, new. But yeah, I, I'm, homework takes me like 20 minutes probably. And then I just. Oh, well, you're really smart. If homework much. only takes you 20 minutes. Oh, yeah. It's not too bad. What about you? What's your routine like? So I wake up at. Well, my classes start at 830. So that means logically I roll out of bed at 8 to 29 <laughs> and just hop online. And I'm supposed to in my classes, we have big, big blue button on our Chromebook. So we have like this FaceTime thing on classes, which I'm sure you're all doing. But my camera on my Chromebook doesn't work. So I just don't log on. So I just don't have to show my face in classes, which is kind of nice. So I just be literally like watching videos on my phone or just hanging out or whatever. So. All right, Dom, let's move on. I have a few questions here for you, Dom. Some uh, would you rather questions mm. that we're going to go into here. So the first one being, would you rather be rich and on an island with no people or be homeless with your people? Okay. First off, um, I want you guys in the comments here. We can, oh, see, we can see your comments. You guys, Chill. Um, just let us know what you guys are thinking so we can interact with you guys. Yeah, I want to see what my pals are saying. But, um, yes, to answer your question, Carter, I would like to be homeless with my people. Um, I would like being, to be homeless with my being people. Being rich and, I mean, yeah, it'd be cool to be rich on an island. You could have some fun stuff. But I feel like being without people for the rest of your life would really take a toll on me. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah. And also, how much does money do for you? Like, what are you going to buy? Like, if you're on an island, you have it, like, mailed to you. Like, a plain drop-off oh. care package. Okay. I'm looking at the chat right now. Every single person who's answered has said homeless. So, 
Yeah, even Todd says homeless. So everyone's going to go homeless, I guess. Not oh, me. Not you? I'm too much of a... I can't agree. If everybody's saying the same thing, I can't do it. That's just not what I do, bro. No, what you do? That's I can. I, I guess I can respect your opinion. All right. <clears throat> Would you rather... Question number two. Would you rather live in Florida or California? I've never been to California. They're identical. They're the same. <laughs> like, I was making this question. I've been to both, and I, like, they're the same. Yeah, I've never been to California. It seems like it'd be cool, but I think it's really expensive from California what I hear. stupid expensive. So maybe Florida, and I, I just like Florida. I've been there, so probably Florida. Yeah, like, but they're literally the same. They're literally the same. Like, I will say there is a higher Hispanic population in California. <laughs> Southern California. And that's where I vacation a lot. And I, I do love I do love Southern California. Definitely. Actually, I'm changing my answer. I would rather go to California just so I could meet a bunch of Warriors fans and be a very annoying cast. And then make sure make sure they absolutely know that they got absolutely demolished on in twenty sixteen. Yes. I'd change my answer. I'd rather be in California for that reason. For sure. For sure. Okay. Next question. Would you rather be a professional musician or a professional athlete? Um, I would definitely say musician. There's a lot less pressure um, on you. I think if you're uh, an athlete, you have to perform every game and do well or else the world's going to kill you. But if you're a musician, you can just take your time and put out your music. So, Yeah, and it always depends on like what kind of music you release and what kind of stuff you do. But I don't think I could ever do I don't think I could ever do live performances. Mm. Not like, like I've been to concerts, like I've been to like Tornal and Pilots concerts. I guess that's the only concert I've ever been to. But like, <laughs> I've seen other concerts like live and stuff. But um, I don't think I could ever like perform in front of like thousands of people. That made me extremely uncomfortable. And but plus, I feel like when you're an athlete, you just kind of get lost in the game. You know, mm. when you play, it's like when you're playing in front of people. Yeah, whatever. Okay. Question number four. If you had the ability to travel either back in time or forward in time, what would you choose? Mm. How far back or how far forward? Uh, that's all I have on my paper. Back Not in time specified. Or time. Um, that means you can get as creative as you would like with this question. Don. I know. The selfish part of me and my initial thinking <laughs> is I would rather go forward because you could see some big event and earn lots and lots of money. Because you can just bet on that event that you know is going to happen. That's stupid, though. So I think I think I'm just gonna keep that answer. Or I, or you could go back in time. See, this is a very this is a very difficult question to ask because there are so many different times. There are so many different things that like come with traveling in time. Like I know in Avengers, there was a whole thing about like you can't go back in time or change the past or it'll just ruin everything. But then there are some some movies that are like it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. So I think I would go back in time if there were no absolutely no consequences. And I would think like like I would undo one of the most embarrassing moments of my life. But that, not, but that makes you who you are today. But they're so embarrassing. <laughs> but they're so embarrassing. Like you know that you know they're so embarrassing like to the point where like I'll just be like hanging out in my house or hanging out somewhere and it'll just all of a sudden that memory will hit back to me and I will feel the embarrassment from that moment just out of nowhere. Does that ever happen to you? Mm -mm. Oh, <laughs> I feel like I feel like a nerd, but I do that all the time. Like I think about those times. I'm like cringe. <laughs> oh, I'm not gonna talk about those times because they're embarrassing. Anyway, okay, I would go back in time if no consequences. Okay, would you rather have invincibility as a superpower or travel at the speed of light? Speed of light. That's easy. Because if you're traveling at the speed of light, no one can catch you or hit you. So you're essentially invincible. But what if I guess that's actually pretty that's foolproof logic. Plus, there is there's someone I read a story one time, and there's this guy who had a disease who he could not feel pain. And so one day he I think Todd actually told me this story. You might have. Anyway, um he got hit by a bus. And stood up and he just started beating up the driver who hit him. But then he says he didn't feel any pain. He like didn't know he was, he was seriously hurt. Mm. And so he fell over and died. <laughs> so <laughs> awesome story. <laughs> I'm glad you could share it. But, yeah, um, so that's my story. Again, what's, what's your point with that story? That having invincibility is not all what it's chopped up to be. 
I'm running at the speed of light. Plus, if you think about this, think about how beneficial, like you could become a professional athlete if you could see things at the speed of light. Because also, not only can you go really fast, I guess this, is, this has always been confusing to me. The people that go really fast in the movies, they see things really slow, right? Mm-hmm. So if, like, if you're playing baseball and that ball is coming super slow and oh, you're yeah. standing there, you slow. could just, whack, and that ball would go for 10,000 miles. Or like if you're running playing basketball and someone's just dribbling, and you could just be like, yeah, and just take it right from them and just run, sprint the length of the floor. Or in football, you're running routes, you just blow by everybody. It's like in the movie uh, Megamind when uh, Metro Man is walking around and pondering his thoughts. He's literally just walking around and like thinking, but everything is like stopped in time. That's because that's how fast he's moving. So if you've never seen that movie, I, oh no, I know what it? you're talking about. As he's pondering everything and yeah. he's like walking around. Okay, and Carter here. doesn't like Mega Mind. I to me, it's the best movie oh, ever created. Mega Mind. Okay, okay. I'm Actually, sorry. I'm more of a Pixar fan. Pixar is great too, but Mega Mind's just its own thing. It's amazing. No, Mega Mind is DreamWorks. It's no, I know, but it's like in its own category of movies. It's just obviously the best not. Movie. It's DreamWorks. Okay, fair enough. DreamWorks also has Shrek, though. Shrek is good. Shrek is good. What else is DreamWorks? I don't know. Shark <laughs> Tales is DreamWorks. All right. I, I think. think I think we're ready for our next segment, which is going to be with Zoe to start out. So here's Zoe. Hey! She's on the move, actually. So, Zoe, what's going on right now? Hey, hey guys. I'm at the Harris's house. So, Sophia and Gia. And I have a little uh, special surprise for them in my hat here. And so I'm going to go see if they're home. And we have a few uh, interview questions we want to ask the girls. So I'm going to ring, knock on the door. Ah, <laughs> the dogs are barking. Hi, guys. <laughs> Wait. Who's is there? Show us. There? Is that Sophia? Yeah. yeah. Big Sophia fan. Yeah. We... Wait, I'm waiting for Gia. Oh, that's Gia, not Sophia. No, that's Sophia. That's Sophia. They sound the same. I can't tell who you're saying. <laughs> that's Whatever. Sophia. I like them both. I like them both. They're both quality. They're, we're dealing with the dog. Wait a second. There's also a guy mowing the lawn. Oh, I'm mowing so... the lawn today. He has a pretty nice little. And I got twenty five dollars for it. Rider <laughs> over there. On, it's a little loud, so I'm sorry about that. Three dollars in tips. Um. UTM. Okay, I have a treat for you guys. Okay. So, there's Swenson's burgers in my hat, and you can take them. Don't. They're for you, but I need to Don't have take one. them. <laughs> We're trying to save you. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, did you guys see that catch? Okay. Here's the deal. I have some questions for you guys. Okay. So, everybody, this is Sophia. Hi. Hello. Over here in the red is Gia. Uh, I know their names sound the same, so sorry. Freaking. <laughs> um, Zoom. <laughs> here's the thing. I have a couple questions for you guys. Okay. First question. Um, if you could, right now, if you could, like, go anywhere and get pizza where would you go and it has to be a place you've been before so you know that it's good like what's your most favorite pizza place in all the world it doesn't have to be in Akron it can be wherever they're collaborating so, okay. Chuck E. Cheese we went to the Outer Banks last summer and like as a family and we were there and we went to this pizza place I, sh- I seriously don't, I don't remember what it's one. called but it was in like the little development where we were staying and it was really good. It had good like yeah, a little plus of buffalo chicken pizza, like barbecue chicken pizza. It was really good. It says low power. Oh no. Can you guys see me? Can you guys see me? Yes. Sorry. So <laughs> so you heard it, you know, buffalo chicken pizza somewhere in the outer banks. In Corolla. That's where it's at. Okay. That's really good. So I think yeah. That's definitely in my That's cool. Okay. Here's another question. And this is this is really targeted towards Sophia. Sophia's a junior that goes to CBCA. My favorites, huh? Not cool, Represent. Zoe. Not cool. Um, so Sophia. Yes. And 
You're in eighth grade, right, Gia? Yeah, yeah. So sh- this is perfect. This is my because my question is, what advice would you give to someone moving up into high school next year? Mm-hmm. So you can you, oh, no. she can just give it to her sister because she's moving into the ninth grade. Let's see. Can I say like more than one thing? Make it got, make, make it short. Make it short. Do your homework. Number one, okay. just do it. I don't care if you don't want to. Just <laughs> do the homework. It'll help you. Get to know your teachers. Okay. And go to football games. So do your homework. Know your teachers. Go to football games. Do you guys think that's good advice? <laughs> okay. Wait, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Zoe. We can <laughs> okay. definitely hear you. We okay, are big cool. Zoe fans. <laughs> Do you, think that's, do you think that's good advice? I mean, yeah. I'm sorry. It's Sully, bro. Sully kills us. Sully's funny. We love Sully. Big Sully fan. Okay, 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 okay. Here's the last question. Last question. This is this is um personal. Okay. So, do you use a loofah when you shower? No, no. We prefer uh, rags. Rags. I, I actually don't use the rags either. I just kind of like let the shampoo like wash it, wash it off. Yeah, like I wash myself because like you know like oh, I gotta like why like if why it, have the rag, rag is gonna get dirty and so is the loofah. You know what I mean? But, but like, but you need something to scrub the dirt off. So you know, I think this is kind of gross. I personally use loofahs. In fact, I just bought three new ones the other day. So um, if you don't use Wait, them, you, you should. Three new. But like you scrub the dirt off and they're like full of dirt. Well, then you rinse it out. So, you know, thank you. You guys, you guys, you guys, I'm winning this argument. It's fine. You can, it's fine. Um, so, uh, um, we're going to say goodbye. Enjoy your okay, sentence. Okay. Really thank nice you. to see you. Yes. Okay. Bye guys. Bye. Thank you. All yeah. right. Good job, Zoe. All right. So before, <laughs> um, before we switch over to Nate, I want everyone in the comment section, take a wild guess as to what Zoe's hat stands for. Jo- Zoe, show them your hat and the initials real quick. Ooh. It I'm is DTS. I would just like to confirm. DTS in that order. DTS, everybody, just in case you guys were wondering. Just so me. take Is everybody guys. wondering? Zoe gets on later. She can actually show us what it really means. Okay. Now, I believe if everything has gone as planned, at this moment in time, Nathaniel Pavlovich, there he is, should be at another destination howdy, howdy howdy just uh arrived at uh my next place um i am walking up as we speak got the uh interview tux nice. on just Boy, looking real nice walking uh, wow. walking nice walking day. it's a beautiful day outside i hope you guys made it outside today but um as i'm approaching the door i'm gonna get ready to knock on hello is anybody home <laughs> Wait. I, hope, I hope just some like 80 year old guy answers the door. No, there oh, they the are. Thing? So, so, so we have Mr. Colbeck. Oh my. Oh my word. Come on now. Real quick. Right here, right here. So, Cole's my. So, uh, guys, thank you for being here today. You, you guys look fantastic. Thank you. You don't shape with your left hand, but um, you guys, you guys look fantastic. I'm glad you guys dressed for today's occasion. Um, so I have, we just wanted to uh, broadcast a few of our students today and just interview them, ask them a few questions. You know, they don't know the questions. This is uh, right off the uh, the dome. If you guys, if you guys uh, follow us on YouTube, uh, we have a, uh, a little uh, series called Off the Dome Debates. Go ahead, check that out. But um. So, Cole, tell me a little bit about, about yourself. You're what grade are you in? And where, uh, you go to, where do you go to school? I've just completed 12th grade at Copley High School. Um, yeah. Do you guys you speak up because you know we have a uh, your, your camera cameraman? Uh, do you mind just get your get your make sure they can hear us? Don't cover the speaker, you know. Perfect, perfect. Well, I'm gonna pay you extra. So, hey, um, Emma, where do you go to school? What grade are you in? Um, I'm a sophomore. I go to Copley High School. Uh, may I add that I will be attending Grace College in the fall. Grace College. Why on a lake? Go Lancers. I am a fellow, I'm a fellow Grace College student. Um, so uh, I have a few questions for you guys today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, ask Cole first. 
topic, just so I can let you think a little bit. So Cole, my first question for you. So if you could have a slice of pizza from anywhere in the world, from your favorite pizza shop, where would it be and, and why? Please inform the people. Okay. I would have to decide Ma. Okay. I would go with Mama Mia's in Florida. Um, me and my buddies go on a vacation there every summer. And it is the best pizza I've ever had, New York style. New York style. Like, do you get any toppings on it or anything? Uh, some pep pepperoni. Pep pep good, solid choice. Solid choice. I'm going to bounce this question over to Emma. Emma, if you were to go to any pizza shop in the world and grab one slice of pizza, where would it be and why? I just have to say any um, Chicago deep dish pizza. <laughs> <laughs> deep dish, am I right? <laughs> Yeah, I think it's good. Yeah, I think so too. I think it's really good. Um, so you like Ch your sauce on top of the cheese? That's what you Yeah, love me. Chicago. Love the Lego store. So Chicago, that's why we like the pizza. Okay. Oh, I'm with I, like the deep, I like the deep dish too. I like the, the, dish. the sauce, sauce, cheese, right. and toppings. And no, then... I'm, I'm right there with you. I, yeah. I actually have to agree with you more Thank than you. Cole. I don't know Thank about you. this Mamma Mia's place. It actually okay. doesn't sound real, but that's besides the point. Absolutely. That's cool. Good. It's the next next question I have for you. So, Cole, right. um, you're your upperclassman. You just graduated. Right. So, right. speaking down to the upperclassmen, if you had any advice for someone coming into high school, okay, what would it be? Give give some good advice for the youngins out there for the for the youth. Okay. Um, well, I definitely say invest in rich friends. Um, so then, <laughs> you know, just it, it helps to know that they have money, even if you might not um, to go on trips and whatnot. Um, but no, also, I think it'd be great to, you know, find a good group of friends, even if they're not rich. Just have them, both of them. And also, I, one more thing, if I may. Yes, you may. Uh, steer clear of all upperclassmen altogether. <laughs> well, I think upperclassmen are nice. I'm sure if you went to high school with Colbeck, he was a uh, gentleman to oh, you. sure. He treated you very well. Um, his dashing looks as well. Uh, Emma Beck, um, right. if you had any advice to any incoming freshmen, what would it be? Um, first off, beginning of the year, homecoming, get a hot date, get to <laughs> Oh my, oh my, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I would also say, um, <laughs> hey, this advice is just, guys, cut this out. Hey, don't listen to this advice. Hey, if there's any advice, no, find, you know what, find a good group of friends. Cole's right. No, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm not finished, please. Um, make sure. To uh, this is kind of going off of yours, but not steer clear of the upperclassmen. Make friends with the upperclassmen because they are good at um, good for rides. No, and they're also good to oh. depend on. Oh, All right. One final thing. Okay, one final thing. Yeah. One of the last question. School spirit is is very important. Oh. So I would say look Incorrect. up. Incorrect. <laughs> not, 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 not be afraid to participate. <laughs> Yes, as a former uh, student sexual leader myself, um, that, oh, that oh, is some, some, some great advice. Yes, I led the student section when I was in high school, and I, I passed that baton down, and they passed it down, and they passed it down, and it landed Boy. in the hand. Okay. Um, so for our last question. Our Nate, last we don't, question, we, we're asking them questions, Nate. We're not, okay. No one wants to hear about your past. <laughs> we don't care. Ooh. <laughs> for our last question. Oh, so the last question I have, it's got a little bit personal, so. Do you use a loofah? <laughs> a loofah. This is the fourth last question, Nate. I would have to say think... no because I take strictly baths. Baths. Perfect. Thank you. That's all. Uh, Emma, do you take you usually a loofah when you when you shower? Um, yeah, I do. I do actually. Why? Uh, yeah, girl. Good at reaching. Good at reaching. Exfoliation. It's, yeah, of course. <laughs> Perfect. Hey, so hey, there you guys Big have words, it. Words though. Have Come on yeah. now, Nate. We, Come on now. Yeah, we, uh, we got you guys some Swenson's oh, burger. So you, can, you can have a Swenson's burger. Thank you can you. have a Swenson's burger. You, you can gift Emma. You know what? Why don't you gift that to someone here? I'll, I'll grab this. I'll grab this. Hold on. How do I flip the? They do. Well, look, there you guys have it. Dapper, uh, we have uh, Emma Beck and Cole Beck here with some great advice, some great interviews. So Zoe, I'm gonna. No, I'm going to throw back to the boys real quick. I'm, I'm shutting my screen off. Okay. Well, oh, oh. it's actually going to come back to me. I have one more person. I have one more house I uh, need wanted to stop at. So um, I'm going to go knock on the door 
in. Let's see who it is. Let's hope they don't open. The stranger uh, giving. Do you think I should ring the doorbell or knock? <laughs> <laughs> I I hope just knock. in the house and like a ninety year old guy just walks out. Oh, hey! Who is it, Zoe? We can't see. Oh, oh, I need to turn the camera around. Hold on. Zoe, rotate your hand. Hey, this is the Henderson. Oh, the Henderson game. <laughs> this is Emma, Ethan, Elise. Hi, guys. How are you doing? I'm super great. Um, I love seeing you guys in person. This is a blast. Um, so I have a gift for you in my sombrero hat, because why not? And um, but you don't get it until you answer the questions. Okay. All right. So if you've been uh have you been watching the Instagram videos? You've been watching. Oh, ah, Do you geez. know what questions good are honesty, coming? Good honesty. Honesty is priority. No, no. You have no idea what questions no, I... are coming. Okay, 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 okay. So many people. So, first question. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. If you could go anywhere in the world to eat your favorite burger. burger. Hey, I'm switching it up. <laughs> Zoe, this wasn't in the script. Abort. Abort. <laughs> It is pizza. Your it is favorite not burger. Oh Where would you go? You ruined it all. <laughs> Done. It's over. Hey, Chuck. Chuck, cut her out. Chuck. <laughs> Ethan says Swenson's. I don't know. I don't usually eat burgers. What? No. <gasps> what about you? I'm going to have to go with Swenson's. Are you kidding me? Swenson's. This is why we didn't ask that question. Because I knew everybody was going to say Swenson's. This is why we this told you to ask pizza, pizza, Zoe. Man, I should just leave. Pizza is the question. I'm, leaving. I'm just kidding. I'm not kidding. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. Okay, okay. What? No, bro. You got, you're not to finish answering my questions. Okay, second question. What, what grade are you guys all in? Freshman? Six. Soon to be senior. Hey! Oh, finishing up that junior year. Very cool. How's it been going? School okay? Are you passing? <laughs> good good stay in school okay um so you know no, i'm curious i'm curious emma specifically you know you are a wise bird and um <laughs> you should also let, let them know that they don't have to answer the question just and, in, um, <laughs> take all precautions and uh i'm just curious what advice do you have for underclassmen, for people coming oh, up into um, into their freshman year, what <laughs> advice do you have for them? Uh, I think what Sophia said, do your homework, is very, very important. Um, <laughs> isn't it? Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sure. Mm -hmm. um, I would have to disagree with that claim. <laughs> Why? Okay, what else? What else? Same. What else? What other advice? <laughs> Same make friends it's honestly like your friends are going to be your rock during high school and it's going to really just, being around people is going to improve high school as a whole and uh -oh. So, oh come on now. our video i'm sorry oh. there you go uh my third advice if you're in marching band stay in marching band because it's the best thing Oy! oh marching my gosh band. Okay, are you guys in marching band? Those are band? homies. You weren't even in marching band. <laughs> you are? What the frick, Dom? Ethan, why aren't you in marching band? Because uh, I don't know why. Because <laughs> he plays drums like a real man. <laughs> People in all marching right, band all play right, drums, all right. Dom. That's pretty good advice. Okay, last yeah. question. Last question. You know, this has to do with personal hygiene. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to answer this. You guys Absolutely. can just go inside. You don't have to prize, answer this. Look at this. In order to get your prize, you must answer. They're cold. Not worth it. <laughs> you, got those, you got those two hours ago, so. If, um, so this is a personal question. And you, you know what? I'm going to give you two, and you can decide which one you want to answer. One, this is for option A. Um, how many times a week do you shower and why? You have to answer the why. Uh, or you can answer the question, do you use a loofah or not? Why would you ever answer this? Oh, he's using a loofah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Ethan. Uh, I shower once a week. Okay. Uh, once a week. Once a week. Once a week. Once a week. 
Good answer. Low score, that's hype. Come on now. Done. That is good. That's well called. Done, that sir. Good. I shower every day because I don't like greasy hair or to be smelling. So. Every, day every day. That's impressive. Even in quarantine? Yes. Wow. <laughs> That's definitely not the case for me. Well, <laughs> um, well, you guys, thank you so much for answering my questions. It was uh, super fun having you on our show. Not our show at Merge tonight. It feels like a show. Oh, this is it? our show. This Great is our time, show. Everybody. Goodbye, Zoe. Okay. Thank you. No, I get the hat back. Take a minute, man. I get the hat back. Her and Nate. All right, I've I've seen it. All right, Zoe, hop off. Hop off, Zoe. It's time. I see how it is. Wait, wait. Actually, not. Don't go off yet. We Bye, need to know. Guys. We need to know what Thank your hat you. means. DTS. The hat, Thank Zoe. You. Inform us. DTS. <laughs> you know, if I would like it to mean. So we all we need are, all we have to know is are the initials. No explanation needed. No explanation needed. That's so attitude-y. I wish it meant like I wish it was DTR and said like define the relationship. That'd be way cooler. But it's not. It's DTS. It stands for Dallas Theological Seminary because that's where I go to school. Oh wow! Did you know that's that? Actually, um, that's actually that Dallas Theological Seminary actually has a really good football team. They're D. They're D one, and they actually were in a bowl game last year. Hey, remember when I asked about their football team? <laughs> I don't. Okay, stupid. Dumb. Just kidding, Zoe. What a nice meeting for your hat. I'm so happy that you have that hat, and it brings you joy. Thank you. It really does, and um, I don't think it anybody should make fun of it ever again, even if it is it's corduroy. Well, if it's corduroy, that's not just unrealistic. So whatever. <laughs> All right, Nate. Now it's time to tell us what your hat means. Can we play guess what's on Nate's hat? Any any guesses? Any guesses? No. Okay. So back in uh, the olden days, back in the olden days of Ohio State football, there was a there's a guy by the name of name of Woody Hayes. Uh, so he's one of the most respect. You guys witnessed it here. I am literally getting a nosebleed live. Oh, sorry, Nate. Sorry, you're, are we get, we lo we're losing <laughs> we're losing you. Sorry, dog. Oh, no no one can see you here. Okay, now the the, the devotional. Check it out. <laughs> yeah, Todd's got us now with the devotional. So um, here we go. Listen up, guys. Well, hey, how's it going, Merge? Good to be back with you. My name's Todd. I'm the pastor of student ministries here at the Bath campus, and I love that we're able to meet together this week. Hey, if you are a graduating senior and you are watching this, I want to let you know that we are actually going to be hosting a senior night uh, the last Wednesday of May. And so we would love for you uh, to opt in to uh, our senior night, and uh, you can do so by just DMing us or reaching out to us through our student ministry number, and we'll help get you set up so that we have everything we need to be able to host that night. But if you are a graduating senior, we would love for you to participate uh, in our senior night that's going to happen the last Wednesday uh, here in the month of May. All right. Hey, the past several weeks, we have been walking through the book of Philippians. And, and guys, we're getting there. We're not uh, too far from wrapping up uh, the entire book. Uh, but we are in chapter 3. And last week, we kind of jumped into chapter 3 and looked at what Paul was sharing with us. And I kind of proposed this thought or, or kind of created a, dis uh, a discussion around the concept of a goal. And like for some of us, we're goal-oriented. Some of us aren't, and that's fine. But I actually asked the question is, is there value in pursuing a goal that you know that you cannot achieve, right? The goal that cannot be reached, is there value in still pursuing that? As we looked at the verses that Paul laid out for us last week, I kind of set up this idea that Paul was sharing with us this, this concept of, of pursuing the goal of perfection, right? Like pursuing or striving toward perfection, but specifically in our desire to know and serve Jesus. I actually do believe there's a lot of value in striving toward perfection. Though we can't reach it, we can still go down that path and get a glimpse of what it looks like of how Jesus was and is uh, what, knowing that he is perfection that way, it gives us a glimpse 
of what that looks like. And so last week, as we kind of pursued uh, this concept of desiring, pursuing perfection in our desire to know and, and serve Jesus, it gives us an idea of what it looks like to resemble that in our own lives. Well, Paul continues in chapter 3, continuing this imagery of setting a goal or running after a goal. And so as we look at chapter 3, verses 12 through 14, he talks about striving after a goal, but this time he says that there is a prize or there is a destination at the end of this goal. And before we jump into this, I think a great way to kind of uh, set up an image for us is someone who runs long distance. Maybe you're watching this and you're a cross-country runner, or you run long distance and track, maybe the mile, two miles, so forth. Maybe some of you, you've trained and you're like, hey, I, I actually am pursuing what it looks like to run a marathon. Uh, all of these long distance runnings actually give us a great image of what it looks like to run after a goal. All right. And so as you think about this, a runner will have a goal in mind, and that's the finish line. It's the final destination of that race, and they're pursuing that goal. So with that image in mind, why don't you turn to the book of Philippians chapter 3, starting in verse 12. And we're going to be reading 12 through 14. I'll give you a second to turn there. Uh, you can look on your phones, or if you have a Bible, feel free to, to turn there as well. Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14, here's what it says. Here's Paul. He says, not that I have already obtained all of this, or have already received, or um, excuse me, or already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Verse 13, he says, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. And as we think about what Paul is sharing here, I love what he's saying. He's like, look, hey, I haven't achieved this. I am not saying that I have already taken hold of this. But one thing that is very clear to me, forgetting what is behind and striving for what is ahead. There is a goal that he's running after. There's a prize that he's saying that God has already set before me. And that's what I'm running after. So if you think of yourself as a long distance runner or, or any race for that matter, there is a goal in mind. And, and from the people that I know who have run uh, long distance marathons, right? If they were focusing all of their time on where they have already come from in the race and how they felt at mile marker four, five, six, seven, and so forth, if they would dwell on how they felt then, I'll be honest, they wouldn't finish the race. They'd be too caught up on what they had already experienced and neglected on what is to come. And so a runner, when you have the goal, when you have the finish line locked in your mind, it gives you the motivation to keep moving forward. It gives you the perspective to know that there's more to come, but you are able to achieve and keep moving forward. And I think what Paul is sharing with us here is a similar challenge. I think what he's saying, he's like, in how we're living our lives, don't get caught up on what has already happened in the past. Forget what has already happened. But in turn, strive to what is ahead. Focus our minds and our hearts on what's to come rather than the things that have already happened. I think it's important for us to remember that we can't let the past determine who we are. We can't land on what has already happened in the past and dwell on that because it's going to keep us captive. It's going to hold us back. But ultimately, God has great plans for you and I on what's to come. And so when we focus on understanding that there is more that is ahead of us, it's going to keep us motivated to keep moving forward. I think about this practically in my life, and this is what I want you to think about for yourself a little bit too. I think we naturally have the tendency to dwell on the past. <clears throat> we have this tendency to hold on to the things that have happened to us uh, in the past, and it affects who we are. I'll be honest, uh, it took me a very long time to let go of something that happened to me back when I was in middle school. I actually held on to a grudge. I held on to anger, frustration, bitterness, you name it. I held on to it towards my dad. 
I held on to such frustration towards him for what he had done to my family back when I was, uh, it was ultimately sixth grade. And so such a long time in my life, I held on to this, and I dwelled on what happened in the past. And I was reminded by uh, some godly men when I was in high school that God actually has a great plan for me moving forward in my life. And hearing that truth and hearing that God wants to do great things in and throughout me, I realized that I needed to let go of what happened. I needed to forgive, and I needed to move forward. And that was a beautiful thing in my life because, I'll be honest, it freed me of some of the emotion that I was holding on to, some of those frustrations and angers that I was like letting direct my life. Instead, I was able to let those go, and I was able to forgive. And so what does it mean to you? Why is this important to you? It's a question that I always want to ask because I believe there is great truth that you and I can be walking away from with what Paul is sharing here of forgetting what is behind. I encourage you to write that down. Forget what is behind you and strive towards what is ahead. What does that mean for you? I want you to think about these questions. The first one is this, I want you to think about something that you might be holding on to from the past. And maybe you've been holding on to them for far too long. Maybe it's a grudge. Maybe you need to like finally forgive that friend, that family member. What is it that you are holding on to from the past? And I want you to ask this question, why is it difficult for you to let it go? In fact, that's something that I want to hear uh, kind of from you a little bit. I understand if you don't want to put that in the comments below. I've got some people that might be joining us to discuss what this looks like. But why is it so difficult for us to let go of the things of the past? The second question is this. What are ways that you and I can forget what is behind? How can we help ourselves and forgetting those things from the past so that we can continue to move forward. I would love to hear from you because I think we can learn from one another. How do you help yourself forget what has happened in the past? Put a comment below so that we can learn from each other. That would be so helpful. I'm anxious and curious to know your thoughts on that, to see how you have forgotten what is behind so that you can move forward to what is ahead. And the last question I think helps bring some practical elements to this and how we can see the show up in our lives today is this question. How can we strive ahead towards Jesus in our lives? Because ultimately that's the goal. That's the prize of running after him, longing after him with our lives. So how are we going to strive ahead towards Jesus in our lives? What steps can we make right now, today? Not tomorrow, not next week. I'm talking about right now. As you were watching this, what steps can we take to strive towards Jesus ahead? Hey, I um, am grateful for you all. And I love that we have the opportunity to still share the truth about Jesus. And I love what Paul is sharing with us. And I encourage you, if there is something that you are uh, desperately holding on to from the past that you want to be freed from, it might be helpful to process what those things are with somebody. And so I encourage you to have the boldness to like reach out if that's something that you want to talk about. Let us know through a, a message or, or reach out to us on our number. We'd love to hear from you about how we can come alongside of you to help maybe get you to, I don't know, experience the freedom of some of the stuff that has happened in the past so that we can all strive forward and ultimately reach the goal of being and understanding who Jesus fully is. Guys, I love you, and I appreciate you all. If there's anything we can do for you, don't hesitate to reach out. All right, we'll see you next week. Thanks. Hey, guys, welcome back. Glad that we got to hear Todd's awesome message together. I'm just going to pray real quick, and then we're going to have some devotionals with Chuck. All right. Dear Lord, uh, just thank you so much that we could hear that from Todd. Um, please just help us just uh, really just look into our lives and see what we don't want to let go of and see what really is just keeping us from uh, trusting you and keeping us from growing closer to you, Lord. Um, help us just to forget 
some of those things that are holding us back and help us just to be excited and trust you for what's going to happen in the future and uh, help us just to have um, open minds and open hearts about what you can do to use us regardless of what we've done in the past. We love you, Lord. Thank you so much. Amen. All right, I'll get us started. <laughs> um, oh, no. Okay, okay. Sorry, 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 sorry. Apparently, we're experiencing some te technical difficulties. Basically, he just asked us to uh, introduce ourselves. Um, yeah, so, and tell us what school we go to and stuff like that. So, uh, I'm Carter. I go to CBCA. I'm a junior. Well, I won't be for, well, we got like one week left of school. And so, so yeah, I'm, I'm coming up. I'm going to be old soon. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm Dom. I go to Copley High School and I'm also a junior. I'm Naomi and I'm a freshman at CBCA. I'm Summer and I'm a freshman at Highland. I'm Diana and I'm a senior at Copley. <laughs> Just come sit over here. Okay, sorry. We have, so apparently what's happening, we're going to have to go on a whim here. So there's been some technical difficulties. I'm actually going to step out for the moment because Chuck can't get his computer working. He's going to take over in my place. So the podcast just lost its farewell, host. everybody. And got a good one. Until, until next. So I'm glad that we can actually enjoy this. Now. Until next time, everybody. All right, come on, Chuck. What's up, guys? This is so fun. Look at, see, I'm, I'm too short. I love like how like technology works sometimes and doesn't work at other times. It just makes just makes it super fun. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so we heard an awesome message from Todd in uh, Philippians three, um, talking about our past, kind of like forgetting what's in our past and moving on toward uh, what's forward and what God has for us. Um, so yeah, we'll just jump right in. Um, why do you think it's important to forget what is behind to strive forward? Um, I think it's important because like we can't fully experience what God has planned for us if we're always thinking about like our past mistakes or things that happened in the past. So I think like God has such an amazing plan for us, but we can't really like see that like the full picture of that unless we let go of those things in the past. Yeah, I love that. That's really good. Dom or uh, Summer, Diana, do you have anything else to add to that? Um, so I think like if you've made mistakes in the past, it's important to like kind of, I mean, like don't just totally forget about them, like um, own up to them. And then you can like just kind of push them to the side. And then like you can't really accomplish your goals if you're too focused on like the mistakes you made. Yeah, that's really good. That's awesome. Uh, question number two that we're just kind of discussing is, um, why is it difficult to let things out of our past go? I think that it's usually when we haven't given it fully to God that we hold on to it. And I think it's a really big deal and we don't forgive ourselves and confess to God and others what we've done. Um, I think that's the only reason that we can't let it go is when we haven't fully given it away. And then when we give it to him and put it into his hands, that's when we'll feel fully um, saved and forgiven. Yeah, that's really good. I think it's always important to note the way that, um, God forgives us, right? Um, Todd even shared a little bitterness that he had, um, like in eighth grade and something that he really needed to give over to God and, um, kind of forget to press on. But I think it's the same in uh, our lives now. There's always things that we've done or just things that we've experienced in the past where it feels like it can kind of hold you back. But I really like what you're saying, Diana, that, um, God's eager to forgive those things and he loves whenever we hand those over to him. Anything else, Tom, you want to add to that? Yeah, I mean, I just think um, for me, I think it's just kind of human nature to really just want to take the bad things in your life and take like the things that you don't, like the things that you're not proud of and kind of just hide them away. 
and it's not essentially forgetting it's kind of just ignoring i think there's a big difference there and um i think to really properly like um take like hold of your past and really just be able to use it to grow you have to acknowledge the things that have actually happened and you have to really just like even if you don't like looking at them and if you don't like like what caused them if you don't like the situation you still have to really just go at it and not just ignore it because if you want to grow, I mean, that's really just what you have to do. Yeah. I like that. I think that's really good. And I, and this is the kind of the thing that I hear from like everyone so far. It's like, there's a part that you have to give over to God. There's a part that, um, that God's waiting there for us to give over to him. So I think that's really good. Um, and the next thing is how can we forget what is behind to move forward? Like, how does this look like, um, in our lives? I know we talked about this briefly and, um, so I'll see, does anyone have anything else to add to that? Um, I think for me, uh, it's like really helped me to like talk to people who have gone mm -hmm. through some things as me. So like whenever I'm going through something, I have like a couple like mentors that I'll talk to and they'll help guide me through it and like show me the steps that they took to get through it so I can do some sort of the same steps. Yeah, that's really good. And like, I know we put our student ministry number, um, like on the screen during the devotional, but if you guys need anything, like, um, feel free to DM us, right? You have our Instagram, obviously, cause you're watching live now, but if you need someone to reach out to, like DM us, talk to us, we'd love to talk to you guys. That's why we're here. Um, and even if you have like a trusted friend or a trusted mentor, someone who's a little bit further than you in life, um, that's so great to help you with some of the um, difficulties that you guys may face. And even right now, we know it's difficult for a lot of people. I think it's, we can all say it's difficult for a lot of us, um, even right now that, um, yeah, it's just different. And we're still trying to um, kind of get back together and figure things out. Yeah. And then the next question or the last question I want to ask is, um, how can we strive ahead towards Jesus in our lives? Like talking about um, whenever we give over our past to God, how can we move forward from that? Um, I think it's like really good to like look at the past, like not the bad things that have happened in your life, but like the good things, like the things that like God has gotten through mm -hmm. and the things that have like made you who you are today. And just like think like if God can do that, then he can definitely do it now. So like, mm -hmm whatever I'm going through, I could just give it all to God and he'll like help me move forward. Yeah, that's really good. I love that. It's like, um, whenever you give over it to God, like God's like there, he's willing to take it. And, um, God uses all of our past. Like there's a, a song, I don't know, Dom, you might know, or some of you guys might know it's a newer song. It talks about how, um, like if, if you aren't, if you, if I'm not dead, God's still working that <laughs> like, no matter what, like no matter everything that I've been through, no matter what I'm going through now, that God's always working. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's really good. Um, and does anyone have anything else they want to add? Yeah, um, I think um, I think it's just super, super important to just understand that this kind of stuff isn't like a sprint, right? Like we like Paul uses this analogy a lot in the New Testament, like running a race and living your life towards God, but um he never says it's like a sprint. Like it's just like a one little section of your life where you have to commit to God. It really, he is honestly saying like your whole life is going to be spent running and you'll get mm -hmm. tired throughout your whole life. And I think that's like a really daunting, scary thing to commit to for anybody. But honestly, um, like Jesus says that in the gospels, he says like, yeah, people are going to give you a hard time for me. Mm -hmm. And he even says um, in Matthew, he's like, yeah, you're going to be blessed for that. Like, that's a good thing. He says, like, when that happens for you, you're going to store up treasures for heaven because of that. So I think um, it's just really important just to remember the promise that God gives us that even in those hard times, which he fully tells us, and, like, we should be fully aware that they are coming, like, that we are still loved and held and God's still with us working for us. Yeah, that's really good. Uh, Summer, Naomi, Diana, do you have anything else to add? Yeah, I was just going to go off what Dom said, just being in constant conversation with God, like throughout whatever you're going through, whatever, whether it's a good time or a bad time or a time like this, where you really can't do anything about it. I think just having that conversation with God every day, the consistency of being in his word and loving him and talking to him, I think is just really important to like stay on that track, stay striving towards him. 
Yeah, I would also say like stay in like the scripture because like there's so much things in there that can like help you through what you're going through because like God puts everything in there for a reason. So like he obviously is trying to help you through what you're going through. So just like digging into God's word and seeing what he's already done through like people's lives and what he can do through yours, like is really helpful. Yeah. Does anyone else have anything to add to that? I thought that was really good. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Like, um, especially Diana and like Naomi about like consistency and being with God. Like there's such, there's so much that um, God works in so many ways whenever we seek him consistently, whenever we're um, just constantly pursuing him in a way um, that like, we use this term relationship a lot, right? Whenever we hear, whenever we describe what it looks like to have a relationship with Jesus, um, we use the word relationship. And we always use this, like, if it's a friend, if you got a friend, and um, you're just getting to know the person, the more time you spend with them, the more you know them. And it's the same with God. And um, in this time, I think there's always a choice for us. And even like, as, um, as someone who's like out of school right now, not meeting at school regularly, um, there's a choice. We have more time, but that doesn't necessarily mean that like, that's the first thing we go to God. So we have to like kind of choose that. And um, yeah, but we see God work um, as we strengthen that relationship with him. So yeah, does anyone else have anything to add before uh, the guys close us out? Awesome. Well, thank you so much um, for all you guys being on here. Uh, we're going to have Carter and Dom close us out. All righty. We got my boy Carter back. Yeah, now that the cute one's back. Come on now. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, but definitely, I was bummed I didn't get to be part of that conversation, but I was standing right there listening to it, and I just, well done by all of you. Like, it sounded like, I don't know, just encouraging to hear you guys talk about it again. Um, yeah, with that, we pretty much are, are done for tonight. A uh, quick reminder, I, I know Todd addressed it in his message. The last Wednesday of May, um, we're going to have senior night. So contact the Instagram, I think. Yeah, so I contact the Instagram, DM them, seniors. And um, yeah, to be a part of that for sure. But um, other than that, we good? I think we good. Yeah, miss you guys. Can't wait uh, to be back together. Hey, uh, jingle. I forget our jingle. We can't do that. Well, hey, we'll, if we're back on again, we'll do it next time. We'll, All right, we'll, fair we'll enough, fair next time. Uh, yeah, but with that, uh, I think we'll, we'll see you guys later. Awesome. Turn it around